Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and welcome to another voice actor spotlight. There are a few female characters in the earlier version of Transformers. G1 had one episode of a group of female Autobots, and over time they became fan favorites that are still getting toys these days, and they were featured in the new War for Cybertron show. The movie and season 3 had RC, which everyone loves, even if her toys aren't always perfect. When it came to Beast Wars, we got two women. Airazor, voiced by Pauline Newstone, and Black Arachnia, voiced by Venus Terzo, who I'll spotlight today. And let me tell you what a pleasure it's been to do research on this woman. She's so friendly, fun and engaging. She talks to fans, answers all their questions thoroughly, and she's always smiling. Let me share my findings with you. Born on October 17, 1967 in Montreal, Quebec, Canada to a Greek family, her name was chosen by tradition, where the firstborn daughter gets her name from her grandmother, which would have been Aphrodite, under the impression that the French translation of Aphrodite could have been misused as the French word affreux, which means ugly or to some extent evil, her parents decided to give her the Roman version's name, Venus, although her full name on her birth certificate is Venus Aphrodite Terzo, which she said is a hard name to grow up with. Venus knew at a young age she wanted to be an actress, as her parents used to take the family to the movies every weekend. She always enjoyed seeing the actors on the big screen as it was always a magical experience for her. Had she not pursued acting, she also had considered a career in law enforcement, but the height requirement prevented that possibility, even if she did play a lot of police officers on screen. She went to theater school in Montreal, a graduate of Dawson College Professional Actors Program. She learned then how to build a character and how to pick a script apart. However, this was strictly theater training. So when she moved to Vancouver and started working in films, TV and voice work, she learned on the job as she got new roles. She prepares by reading everything associated with any role, either the script, a character description or any notes from the director. During her now 30 plus years career, there wasn't a role that she found more difficult than another, but that the subject matter sometimes was the hardest part. Now let's take a look at her roles. At the time of this recording, she's listed for 216 roles on IMDb and 140 of those for voice acting. Her first on-screen role was on the series Wise Guy as Heidi Kesselman. A couple of weeks passed and Venus couldn't decide if she wanted to live in Vancouver. So she turned to the universe to show her a sign why she should be there, and she got it. She got a role on a movie called Laura Lansing Slept Here, starring Katherine Hepburn. Venus met her at the rap party and it confirmed her choice to pursue acting. On top of a lot of TV movies such as To Grandmother's House We Go starring the Olsen twins and many short-lived series like Mom P.I., The Hat Squad and Robin's Hood, she then went on to guest star in popular TV shows such as The Beachcomber, the hit miniseries It as Cindy and 21 Jump Street. She even got to play on the cult classic Highlander series, the popular show Viper twice, Stargate SG-1, Andromeda, The L Word, and Sanctuary. Venus also had a lot of recurring and starring roles. She portrayed Valerie Sanducci 14 times on Street Legal and got the lead role of Detective Angela Cosmo on the popular series Da Vinci's Inquest and the spin-off series Da Vinci's City Hall. She won a Leo Award in 1999 for the best lead performance by a female in a dramatic series for Da Vinci's Inquest. In the previous decade, she played in Minority Report, Blackstone, and my favorite show, Supernatural. She played in season 1 as Joanna and came back in season 11 as Sonia. She also got to play the hostage negotiator in Skyscraper and follow that with 7 episodes of The Murders as Rita Gallo and Dr. Elisa Schwartz in 14 episodes of the hit show Arrow. But for us, she shined in animation where she showcased her talent extraordinarily. Her first role was for Captain and the Game Master where she played Princess Lana, Medusa and Warp of Life. On the new adventures of He-Man, she played Mara, Sorceress and Krita, while on My Little Pony Tales she portrayed Patch. She also did 90 episodes of the adventure of Sonic the Hedgehog as Breezy and dubbed the lead role of the female version of Ranma Soatomi in Ranma and a Half. Then she dubbed Biko on Project Echo 2, plot of the Daitokuji Financial Group, Project Echo 3, Cinderella Rhapsody, and Project Echo Versus. 
She worked on the show Reboot as both Giga Girl and Copy Girl, and did 20 characters on Sky Surfer Strike Force, including Laserette and Miko. Soon after, she created the voice she'll be remembered for, Black Arachnia. Taking advice from the legendary Sue Blue, to whom she's still grateful today, she placed her voice in the back of her throat and delivered a performance still beloved by fans today. <laughs> you can't fight my cyber venom kitty cat, but don't fret. I'll be back for you when I have your precious pod and the new Predacon within. <laughs> Even if Black Arachnia's relationship with Silverboat was toxic. Hello, it's a volcano, Bone Brain. It's still the most talked about love story in Transformers. <sighs> like I needed him to catch me anyway. <laughs> She reprised the role for the spin-off series Beast Machine. His spark is trapped inside Thrust, I know it. I need that organic core as a catalyst to reawaken him. But went on to star in another cult animated show, X-Men Evolution, as the fan favorite Jean Grey. She even reprised that voice for Iron Man Armored Adventures. She kept doing dubbing jobs as Princess Milerna Aston on Escaflown, Tiger on Saber Marionette G, Olivia Carlyle on Soul Taker, and Katsumi Akagi on Project Arms. Then she went back to the My Little Pony franchise in the movie A Charming Birthday as Sparkleworks and Rainbow Dash, reprising the roles for Dancing in the Clouds, Friends Are Never Far Away, A Very Minty Christmas, The Princess Promenade, The Runaway Rainbow, A Very Pony Place, and The World's Biggest Tea Party. And throughout this, she also voiced Lanny Tam on Four Hot Wheels Acceleracer movie, being Ignition, the Speed of Silence, Breaking Point, and The Ultimate Race. She was featured in Mobile Suit Gundam Sea Destiny as Talia Gladys, Fantastic Four World's Greatest Heroes as Lucia Von Bardis, and Death Note as the Thief Weddy, including the spin-off show Death Note Relight Vision of a God. Pete the Cat, where she voiced Emma's mom, is her current last credited role in 2021. I've listened to a lot of voice clips while researching this spotlight, and let me tell you, I'm impressed by the range of this woman. From good, to evil, gentle, to seductress, she's always spot on. It's too bad she didn't reprise the role of Black Arachnia for the Kingdom chapter of War for Cybertron. I would have loved to hear her one more time as that iconic temptress. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Venus Terzo's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I love reading those. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, Nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care!